Hey guys, my name is Shai and I'm recording this weekly reading on January 16th, 2022. And we have some black kitty cat magic going on here. That's just her tail. <laughs> she doesn't want me to touch. We'll see if she wants to come into the reading. She very, very, very rarely sits up on this desk and very rare, rarely does she do so when I'm doing readings. But she tends to drop in every once in a while, like for a few specific private clients and for one or two videos, I think she's hopped up on the desk. It usually means something that it, something about this energy is interesting to her, right? Because she, she doesn't do anything that's not interesting to her. She's a cat and she's a very smart, very um, like a reclusive but curious kind of cat. <sighs> so we're just gonna see what she does. She might walk all over my cards. <laughs> Before I get to the cards, I just wanna talk a little bit about the astrology, but you can skip straight to the cards if you want. I will put a timestamp down below. So today is the 16th. We have the infamous Sun Pluto conjunction. Um, and the double, like the double, triple, quadruple whammy doesn't stop because tomorrow, um, I'm, I'm gonna put the dates down below as well. Tomorrow is the full moon in Cancer. And then the day after that, on the 18th, uh, Uranus is going direct in Taurus. He's been retrograde for like five months or something. And then the day after that, on the 19th, the sun is moving into Aquarius. So super busy, <laughs> super busy energetically. And the Sun-Pluto conjunction, I know I talked about it last week, but now that, I've ex that, now that I'm experiencing it, uh, I have a little bit more to say about it. Um, I, I actually got like really sick yesterday, like physically sick um, from, from its energy uh, because it's all the Pluto sun conjunction is the transformation of the self. Essentially Pluto comes in to transform the sun, which is also the solar plexus energy. So you're literally transforming yourself, the transformation of the self. And some people are experiencing this in the physical body, which was me, I was like experiencing it like with physical ascension symptoms. Some people are experiencing it in the mental body where they're having to sort out and purge and release toxic thoughts or being attacked by your own thoughts. And others are experiencing it in their emotional body, just being overwhelmed with um, emotional experiences. There's also a few people who seem to be like sailing through this with like no concerns, <laughs> which is nice. If you are one of those people, uh, just know that you are doing us all a service by holding down some nice, stable and crystal clear energy for the rest of us while we sort through this. And it also means that that um, energy work that you have done before basically cleared out whatever was relevant and there's just nothing relevant coming up for you to purge right now. But it's like the more toxicity that is relevant for you to purge right now is coming up to be purged right now. And it's hard to separate this all from the full moon in Cancer because it's all happening at the same time. Um, yeah, like, like I talked about last week, but this polarity switch this polarity switch, I'm seeing it in <laughs> so many, so many ways. It's like little, little tiny things I'm finding myself reversing. And it's, it's so interesting, right? Because we have Mercury, Venus, and also still Uranus all retrograde. And the Mercury retrograde in Aquarius is turning everything on its head, making everything go inside out, opening up everything entirely. And... It feels like revisiting stuff from the past, but then turning it on its head and doing it in a completely different way. Completely different way. As for Uranus moving direct on the 18th, um, I expect the 18th and like, you know, the days around it um, to be that that's when this inside out energy, this polarity switch, this things being backwards, things being inverted in all manners is going to be at its height whenever one of the outer planets especially neptune and uranus are uh, switching directions basically or you know doing the optical illusion of switching directions um that day is always really weird when like it, if, for example it would be a really good day to watch like benjamin button you know <laughs> the whole idea of aging backwards um stuff like that and in case you haven't noticed well, I mean, I, I know I'm already always really out of it when I'm doing readings, um, but uh, 
my ability to linearize anything right now is completely gone and it's like my thoughts are just com completely all over the place. So thank you everybody for just kind of rolling, <laughs> rolling with me. And um, what else, what else about the astrology do I think is interesting or worth noting? Oh, so... just to kind of acknowledge the people who are having an extremely difficult time right now. Um, because th there's this whole spectrum of kind of where people are at. Some people are really down at the bottom. Some people are just kind of in the middle and some people are riding high at the top. And I don't know. I have been, I have been like, I've been doing like really well, you know, I mean, not everything's perfect. Right. But I, I've been feeling, feeling really, feeling really good, feeling pretty um, energetically, you know, together. But more so than ever, I, I am like so aware of how low other people are feeling. It's like I can, I'm almost being at times overwhelmed by the overwhelming emotions of others. And it's not even people that I know. It's like I can feel it coming out from the entire human collective. Um, and so it's like I know so many people are having a particularly intense time right now. And I just, I don't know, wanted to acknowledge that for any of you watching it who are, who are having some of the, maybe those, some of the lowest points in your life right now. It's like, you know, we, we, we feel you, we feel you, we, 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 we feel what you're going through. And, um, ah, oh, but it is just so much so to like release, release and release all of the toxicity that has been piling up. It's like right now you might not, um, nothing will convince you that what you're going through is actually for your highest good. I know that when you're going through it, nothing is going to convince you that that's actually good for you, but you will, you will. I promise you, the universe promises you that you are going to understand why this all happened and you will come through it like shining brighter than ever. Cause it's the image I'm getting actually is that, you know, if your headlights are all covered in mud, you have to go out there and scrub the mud off. <laughs> that's what's happening to you right now. All the mud is being removed so that your light can shine brighter than ever before. And then to everybody else who is like, doing pretty well yourself, but you, you are, but you also feel overwhelmed by the emotions of others and they can be people that you know, or you can just be feeling it ambiently. Get really, really clear and get really, really, like really, really notice when you're picking up other people's energy. Um, cause you are feeling other people's feelings and not all of the bad feelings that are running through your system are yours. And it's such an opportunity right now to really notice, really notice, protect your energy. If you have to give yourself space, if you have to, all of that because you're feeling everybody else's feelings and it's a lot and you won't be able to continue. That's actually part of this energy is you, <laughs> if you're being overwhelmed by other people's energy, it's to get you to drop their energy, to get you to let it like to, to, to uh, it's, it's tough, right? Because it's not really about protection. Although anything you want to do to protect yourself is perfect do that right but it's not really about protecting yourself it's more like sensing these things and then just letting them go right that, that that's i think the lesson here is sense the things right whether you're experiencing your own like inner turmoil and your own emotions sense that observe it and then let it go or if you're taking in and absorbing all of the emotions of others to notice that and then let them go just let them go is it, it, this this con it takes constant awareness constant emotional awareness of noticing what's happening um noticing what you're feeling noticing what you're picking up on and then just letting it go like not hanging on to anything that, that's basically the astrological energy right now is like radically radically um like radical non-attachment radical non-attachment That's going to be an even bigger thing um, for once the sun moves into Aquarius, all this Aquarius stuff being activated because Saturn's also in Aquarius. Um, it's almost like we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're meant to detach from each other, but in like a loving, compassionate, compassionate way. It's like, how much love can you feel for someone? How much compassion and how much empathy can you feel for someone without having, um, that like negatively impact you, right? Can can you can can you love openly and freely without any need to cling or to put um, barriers or boundaries or controls, right? And but then also, how can you feel compassion and empathy without 
actually letting other someone else's low vibes or just the ambient low vibes of the planet without letting that get you down. It, it's like takes radical non-attachment to be able to just experience all of this without it like getting to you, right? Because you need to be able to keep yourself um, out, you either need to keep yourself in the high vibrational state or get yourself into that high vibrational state. That's that's the name of the game. That is the only lesson we're learning, right? Uh, so radical non-attachment. And yeah, I think I will get to the cards. I'm just using the Rider Waite. Rider Waite today. It always interests me when I'm drawn to the traditional kind of basic Rider Waite deck because... It always feels like a back to basics, basics or back to foundations thing to me. <laughs> King of Swords. Yes. Radical, <laughs> radical non-attachment. <laughs> That's the King of Swords, right? The King of Swords <sighs> is not the King of Cups. The King of Swords is not, you know, living in his emotional body all of the time but the king of swords like all of the the kings and queens in the tarot i see them as oh, that's not going to work um i see them as you know balanced mature individuals but with their own type of slant to their, to their energy so this energy is it's like get intellectual tune into that air energy of aquarius and rise above and know your know your own value right this could be the king or the queen this could be the king or the queen of of swords because honestly um if i were to make a tarot deck i would actually get rid of kings and queens i would just have one card representing both the king and the queen because they're so so similar um anyway so you know just take this whichever way and this is know your own value. Know your own value and know that you deserve to rise above. You deserve to, to rise above. You could be the king or queen. You could be the ruler. You deserve to rise above. Know your own value. The ruler understands. Like, and this is tough because humans, we have all of this baggage because we have been we have we have had so many experiences with unjust rulers right and different like feudal systems and different imperial systems right but if we're looking at this king of swords for, for, like from its pure archetype right this would be the benevolent monarch right the pure benevolent monarch like the king that you would keep electing it would be like an elected king and you would keep electing him because you would truly 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 be of highest service to the people it would be like we just keep this one person in power forever because they they because they have like they are just an embodiment of service to the people um, but at the same time, they're not a slave, right? They're, it's like they are of service. They are a servant. They are a servant leader, but they are not. Enslaved to the people. This is an energy that knows its own value. And it's interesting that this came out as the King of Swords because this is directly related to me with the current um, Cancer full moon. I keep getting the message from the Cancer full moon. It's, it's know your own value, know your own value. Know your own value so that you can receive the value that you deserve. This is, <laughs> this is like the divine feminine rising up and rising above, represented here as the divine masculine. Almost like the divine feminine is you know, she wants to be on top. <laughs> she wants to be on top and she knows her own value. And I actually have a really funny example um, <laughs> for like to continue. I could just go on with this card. I think I'm going to pull maybe only three cards for this whole reading um, because I'm getting a lot just from this. And um, this whole thing about know your own value. Okay. The example coming to mind is imagine a younger woman, right? And she's going to bed with a man. And maybe she's really nervous. She's like, oh, what if he doesn't like this about my body, right? Maybe she's like really conscious about her body and she's thinking, oh, should I have done this? Should I have done that? Should I do this? Should I do that? He's not going to like this about me. What if he doesn't like this about me? And she's all worried and anxious about like, <laughs> like she doesn't feel like she's valuable and she's worried about how she's going to be received in bed, right? <laughs> and I think, you know, a lot of younger women have that experience. Um, but then this is like directly contrasted with 
the experience of an older, more mature, more experienced, and more confident woman going to bed with a man for the first time. And <laughs> she's gonna have a completely different perspective because she's going to know her own value, like absolutely, right? She's not gonna be worrying about little things about her body. She's not gonna be worrying about this, this, and that. She's gonna, she's gonna understand her value and she's gonna understand like supply and demand even, right? She's gonna understand that she is like in this situation, right? She is the thing in demand. And she's the thing that is most valuable and that the guy she's going to bed with should is just going to be happy that she's there right? if she's there if she's willing if she's confident and enthusiastic then it doesn't all of these things that she could worry about don't actually matter because at the end of the day she's a naked woman getting into this man's bed and he's gonna love it right <laughs> like that's the, that's that's this kind of energy it's like i am here i am this i am so valuable i know my value and it doesn't matter that i'm not perfect i am so valuable in my imperfection i am just so valuable in my own self that like <laughs> it's like take it or leave it here i am this is me I am just so valuable <laughs> and just, just, just because I am right. Just because I am, that is the message with that. That is the energy to tune into. Like if, if you can tune into that energy this week, you will be doing fantastic. <laughs> okay. we got the next card nine of swords. Okay. So <laughs> a lot of you are like, I don't feel like that. I don't feel my own value. Um, you have these fears and anxieties coming up. I can't remember, did the Nine of Swords come up last week? I feel like I've been seeing this lately, right? I am not at all surprised to see this because the Mercury retrograde is like the softening of the ego, the opening of your mind is releasing all of your mind's fears. And I caught my, and this is also the Pluto sun conjunction, right? I caught, I caught myself doing this yesterday. Um, weird little random things happened and I was getting paranoid. I was like, oh my God, this thing is out to get me, blah, 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 blah. I was getting so paranoid and I was getting like irritable and I was like, me and my husband were bickering over the dumbest stuff and everything was just kind of spiraling out of control into turning into this kind of dumbass nightmare, this kind of thing. And, but I kept reminding myself, I was like, nah, this is just, this is just my mind. And I kept worrying about things that might happen. No, 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 no. Those are all the products of your mind. I mean, to just to acknowledge, yes, there is a small chance. Yes. For some people who truly, truly, truly have something like real going on, you know, there is maybe like a 1% chance that, <laughs> you know, for somebody, the the thing that you fear is real. But for the vast majority majority of us, with the vast majority of things that we're worrying about, the vast majority of anxieties and nightmares that we have, they're just projections of our mind, right? Right now we are, it's like they're literally flying out of our heads, like flying out of our heads. We have all of these nightmares, these anxieties, these fears, they're flying out of our minds, right? We, <laughs> they are, most of them, most of them are not real. They are not real. Um, so the, if you have something that you're worrying about, like tackle it head on. Like this is when you wake up at night and you think like there's a spider like crawling across your bed or something and you turn on the light and it was just like a fluff of cat hair, right? Just turn on the light and take a look at it, whatever it is. The more you sit around and worry about it, the more that's just going to grow. And um, I've really been noticing something about like this year, even so far, it's like, how do I explain? It, it, it almost feels like our thoughts, the power of our thoughts and our words to manifest and to grow and to add energy to something. It feels like it's more than it, than I have ever experienced before. I actually keep finding myself editing my words, like, you know, out of like force of habit of, you know, just the way I've lived my life. Um, when I'm like talking, to like my friends and like in my house and stuff, right? I, I can use a lot of like really negative language and I can say things that are, sometimes I'll like really over exaggerate something and I can say something that is like really negative, really mean, really snarky when I didn't even really mean it like that. You know, maybe I just thought it was funny or maybe it was just like a speech pattern I picked up when I was 18, you know, stuff like that. And I've been finding myself like editing it because I'll say something and I'll, as soon as I say it, I'll realize that like what I said was like not aligned, not good for anybody. And I can tell that the fact that I said something negative is just like amplifying the negativity. So I keep editing it and I keep trying to be a little bit more careful with how I speak and even with how I think, especially with how I think about myself, right? Don't, if, if you're running negative things in your mind about yourself, 
No, you rewrite the script rewrite the script, especially with all this air energy, right? The sun's moving into Aquarius, the Mercury's in Aquarius, the mind is being activated, but it's activated in this completely open-ended, like free form type of way. So you, this is like an almost unprecedented um, opportunity to rewrite the script on your own mind. So when you, when your mind is saying something negative about yourself or saying something negative about somebody else or saying something negative about the future, your inner critic is running its mouth rewrite the script, say the exact opposite, right? If you keep saying like, I can't do it, just say I can do it. <laughs> if you say something like, oh, you know, I gained too much weight over Christmas, that now like my jeans don't fit, say, you know, I love my body, my body is beautiful. <laughs> just re rewrite the script because your body is listening to you. Your body is listening to you. The universe is listening to you. Your words and your thoughts have our vibration. They are literally, literally. And I mean, it's one thing, it's even easier to understand how your words are vibration, right? Because your words are sounds. Sounds are literally vibrations. They're literally out there in the air. So you want your words to be positive, to have positive vibrations because they will amplify. And coming out to judgment here. I love that this came out because the most recent video I made that I will link down below was um, kind of inspired by Archangel Gabriel and the judgment card. This is Gabriel, the horn that wakes the sleepers. Wake up, your time is now. Wake up, your time is now. And it's like, wake up out of this. <laughs> this is the nightmare and it's the sleepless night. Waking up out of that. Like the archangels are blowing their horns, waking you up out of this, waking you up out of the nightmare. It is time to wake up out of the nightmare and to remember your value, to know that you are the ruler of your own life, to know that you are the most valuable thing in your life. You are the most powerful thing in your life. Of course you are the most powerful thing in your life because you are the only thing that creates your life. You create your own reality. Therefore, you are the most powerful being you know. You are the most powerful being, the most valuable being that it is possible for you to know because only you create your own reality. Time to wake up and remember that remember your value <sighs> i want some oracle cards but i'm actually being shown to draw some of these this is just another tarot deck lots of animals on it and you know actually just yet last night i was really putting it out there to i was asking i was asking for animal spirits to kind of come in and guide my way really feeling strongly connected to animals and you know what there is an oracle card in here <laughs> this is the one this is why i was supposed to go into this deck what <laughs> i guess when i was putting my cards away at some point i put one of these other cards got in there so i'm not even going to draw these i'm going to use this one what is this displacement here is the chaos here is the wind look at this this garbage is like flying around in the wind the crows are everywhere i'm gonna hope that's snow that's all over this car <laughs> maybe it's not snow <laughs> maybe it's something the crows put there Out of time, out of mind is the phrase I'm getting with this. Out of time, out of mind. I'm being reminded of the song Everlong by the Foo Fighters. <laughs> if anybody remembers that. If you have recently been displaced or if you find yourself displaced later this week, it is because you're being put into your kingdom. You were in some place, some energy, right? For some people, this will be physical, like literally places. For others of you, the place is just in your mind, right? The place is your energy. 
place and energy. Your energy is your place. You exist in your own energy. So if you've been displaced from a location or displaced from an energy, this could also be people, you know, it's like you were inside somebody else's kingdom and you cannot live inside somebody else's kingdom if you want to be the king, queen, or ruler that you are, right? The king of swords needs to be in his own kingdom. This feels like being sent on a journey to discover your kingdom or queendom or empire, right? <laughs> In amidst all of this masculine feminine duality thing we got going on with the Capricorn sun and the Cancer moon, I feel very strongly like this, this androgynous and neutral state coming in between. That's the Aquarian energy. Because Aquarius energy is neither masculine. It's both masculine and feminine, but at the same time, it's neither, right? It, it's like, it's transcendent of that. It's transcendent of that. So the third piece, the third neutral space is coming in. And this polarity switch we've been talking about, switching from one thing to your opposite, to your opposite pole, is part of the journey to find your center. The center, the neutral space in the middle is your kingdom. Is your empire. The neutral space in between the two poles that you have experienced is your empire. Oh my god, I'm getting really strong set of shivers and seeing this image of um, like a marble, it, like a marble funneling down a funnel, like rolling, rolling, rolling down a funnel. You're going around and around and around this this spiral and you're going all the way down to the middle until you pop out, pop out the center. So it's like you've gone around, you're going around and around and around, but you're heading to the center all the while heading to the center, journey, the journey to the middle. So any kind of displacement happening is to put, put you on your path, put you where you need to be. It's actually displacing you out of the nightmare. You don't need to be in the nightmare. You're waking up from the nightmare. At first, it feels like displacement. Have you ever woken up from a nightmare and, you know, or, you know, any kind of really vivid, intense dream and it takes you a couple minutes to realize that, like, you're awake now and that, like, it's okay and that the nightmare still isn't going on and you, and sometimes even that nightmare, the energy from the dream can, like, bleed out through the rest of your day? It's because you've been displaced and it was like your mind somehow was still stuck in the dream, but it's, you're waking up from that and the feeling of displacement is just you getting used to who you are now. You need to get used to who you are and you need to get used to knowing that you are the ruler. Because you don't want to be in this dingy, dingy looking city with the garbage and the car covered in crochet, right? <laughs> Maybe you even got out of the car because so many crows pooped on it. You were like, this is literally covered in shit. I'm out. <laughs> and so then you're walking down the road and, you know, maybe you had a car full of stuff and you're like, I can't take all this with me if I'm not driving anymore. Now I'm going on foot. You get out of the car so you can only take one backpack with you. And whoever else can walk beside you. Anything that you're going to, you're gonna, that's what you're taking with you. You're taking one backpack, one backpack with only your barest essentials, only what you most need and anyone who walks beside you. You, you cannot carry anyone with you. You can't. The people who come with you have to be able to walk beside you, right? Your dog can, can come with you. They can walk beside you. Anybody willing to walk beside you comes with you. If they're not walking beside you, they're not coming with you. I want one more card for one final, one final thing. The Knight of Pentacles. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> it's funny. I saw, I had a thought for a few days and I knew that I, it would be aligned for me to share that thought if the knight of pentacles came out <laughs> so thank you my guides for popping up the knight of pentacles now i know what the final message is
Okay. The Knight of Pentacles is slow. Very slow moving, right? The Knight of Pentacles, this is the tortoise in the hare. The Knight of Pentacles is the tortoise. So the thing with this is this is the energy that we're in for a bit. Like for a bit, you're going to be in this slow retrospective inwards kind of space where but you are on your quest you are on your path it's just that for a while your path is slow you're not going to get to your destination tomorrow your manifestation might not come through next week right and this actually this is like a message for the whole year but especially up until between now and the equinox so you know like the end of march is that when the equinox is I hope I got that right. Yeah, <laughs> kind of, you know, around March 20th or something like that when we move into Aries season. Um, I, I have been getting this feeling that, you know, the beginning of this year was, has been so slow and it like lacked the kind of New Year spark. It lacked the fresh start feeling that we all want from the New Year. Um, you know, it's part of all, it's part of like the Venus and the Mercury retrograde. And it's also just that looking the North Node in Taurus as well. It's this slow moving energy and we're laying foundations we're getting our dreams in order we're getting our plans in order and we're getting everything cleaned out right all the stuff that can't like that we can't carry or that can't walk beside us we're sorting through everything we are preparing this is like a major preparatory turn like period of time for the rest of the year so you know for the next like couple of months ish <laughs> Don't expect too much of yourself. And if you're feeling frustrated, bored, a little restless, a little bit like there's all these things you want to do this year and all these things you want to manifest this year and you're like, why is everything not happening yet? Right? Try to under just try to remind yourself that that's just part of the energy that we're in and that the kind of boom and the bang and the go 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 and the fast energy that's coming right that's what Aries season is for that's why I, I like waking up every year on the first day of Aries season is like this amazing just like blast of vitality and energy it's like yes we finally made it to Aries season right but we're not in Aries season yet right we still got to get through Aquarius and Pisces season and finish up all of this introspecting and this like energetic house cleaning and for some of us real house cleaning and all of it so um and I basically didn't want to put it out to the world that like yeah you know I think for like the next two months we're all going to be kind of just doing a bunch of sitting around and introspecting and feeling and inner work and stuff like that but then uh, two of the energy readers that I respect the most um they've apparently been getting the same kind of feeling um they mentioned it in, in two of their videos and then this card came out so now I know that I'm meant to put that out there right like <laughs> Um, so this isn't to be, this is meant to be like an inspiring message actually, to actually take this time, um, to just really be still, to really be slow, to really allow yourself to rest, um, and to just focus on your inner work, to focus on any energetic cleaning, cleanup you want to do, um, because, oh, by the way, I, man, I forgot to mention it, um, yesterday when the... Sun Pluto conjunction energy when I started feeling it coming in. Um, I received like a it was like a healing and a clearing to my lower chakras, and it also like rippled up into my third eye. And um that was part of why I was like physically sick yesterday from from the energy of integrating that. So you are doing like the, and obviously that 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 upgrade, that healing, that clearing wasn't just for me. This is available to anybody. Um, if you, you you guys have already been, it's already been available to you. Some of you have already received it. Um, if you not sure or you think you haven't yet, you know, just before you go to bed tonight, just put it out to your guides that you are ready to receive, you know, a healing and a clearing to your chakras to whichever ones are relevant for you. And I really feel it's going to be like lower chakras as the focus right now, because it's clearing out the foundation and setting the foundation. And um, that's what this period of time is all about. So anything you want to manifest this year, anything you want to do this year, just focus on pouring your dream into it. Keep dreaming it up. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep focusing on where you want to go. But just know that don't expect yourself to have any like... Um, don't put pressure on yourself to do anything essentially before the March equinox because the energy is just 
really encouraging us to go inwards and to slow down and to lay the foundations and do all of the preparatory work. So yeah, Knight of Pentacles it is. The tortoise, right? The tortoise always wins. The tortoise always gets to the finish line. And somehow the tortoise actually gets to the finish line first, even though everybody else was running around like a hare very much faster, right? Slow and steady will win the race right now, guys. That is the, that's the theme all the way until Aries season. So I'm going to leave you guys there. I will see you next week. Sending you lots of love and light. Bye.